Hi guys and welcome in the third video of this playlist, the scientific backtesting guide. In this video, I will explain why robustness testing is so important and I will explain you why these methods can give you a reliability metric of your backtests. Again, as for the previous videos of this playlist, each video is associated to a blog post that I advise you to read because I didn't explain the things in the same way in videos than in the article. So take a look to both will help you to better understand each method. And this video, as all the videos of this playlist, is sponsorized by the AlphaQuant program, which is a quant trading program that combines e-learning videos, 7 day of a 7 support, and real quant monthly project. So if you are interested by that and you want to go deeper into the field, feel free to take a look in the description. So first of all, we need to explain very quickly what is robustness testing. In two words, robustness testing is here to give a reliability metric of your backtest. You will use robustness test to say that the previous returns that you had using the work forward optimization, for example, are not due to randomness. So the goal is to remove the lucky randomness problem from the equation. To do that, we know that the historical path data is one path that the past could be. So we will just resample hundreds of time the historical data to have a lot of different possibilities that the past could be. And we'll train our parameters and test the best parameters of each in sample on the out sample associated. And the goal is to obtain a probability of overfitting and a sharp ratio distribution. I will explain you that in detail in a few minutes. First, let me explain you how we will create these different sets because as we work with time series, we need to be really careful and we need to use a specific method. To create that, we'll use the combinatorial perch cross-validation. This method is a cross-validation adapted to the time series. So that's a very good point. And that's why here we have some space always when we switch from an in-sample to an out-sample and the opposite. We have always a space there because we purge our data because the time series keep information of the past over the time and we don't want to have um, a leakage of information between our different samples. That's why we add these spaces, which is just data that we don't take in the in-sample and neither in the out-sample. And the term combinatorial comes from the method that we will use. For example, here, if I take n equal 10 and k equal 2, it means that we'll do all the possible combination of a combination of two samples in 10 samples. And at the end, we'll have 45 possible paths. Here, in the illustration, I've shown you the different paths that you can have using a CPCV, combinatorial perch cross validation. The goal is to create a lot of different paths to check if our optimization method really works or not. Now, let me explain you in detail the steps to create our robustness test and more precisely, our combinatorial perch cross validation because the CPCV is only one robustness test through a lot. First of all, you need to take the same parameters that you want to optimize then the work forward optimization. So for us, it will be the SMA period and the RSI period, if you have seen the previous video. Then we need a criterion, which will be the sharp ratio. But again, you can do that with the criterion that you want. And this time, we'll compute the sharp ratio on all the possible combination of parameters for the in-sample, but also for the out-of-sample. And that's very important. When we worked with the work forward optimization, we computed all the different possibilities on the in samples and we backtest only using the best one. But the goal of this robustness test is to quantify your overfitting. And overfitting is the fact that you have good performances on the in sample and bad performances on the out of sample. And to know if the performances is bad or good on the out of sample, we need to have all the possible possibilities and we'll order each possibility. For example, here we can see that 
the best parameters are 60 and 13. If you apply these parameters on the out of sample, you will have a sharp ratio around one, which is not the best sharp ratio of the different possibilities there. And that's what we will quantify here. Here, we can see that over 50 possibilities, okay, our best parameters on the in sample are ranked at the 10th place. It means that you have better parameters for the out sample. But for sure, you can always find best parameters. Our goal for us is that it's just into the best parameters. For example, here is the rank is 10. It's pretty good because we have 50 possibilities, okay? But if the rank was, I don't know, uh, 40, okay? It's not really good. It means that this optimization process is not good. Once we have this tables for each path, it's very important for each path, we'll be able to compute our probability of overfitting. So I didn't put a lot of computation there, but I put in the bibliography, the article, the research paper that I used to create this method. So if you are interested by that, just take a look in the bibliography in the video description and at the end of this article. So how we will do that? Let's explain on one path and after that, we'll just have to repeat the process on the others. First, you compute the best parameters on the in sample. Okay, that's good. Second, you will rank your best parameters from the in sample on the outs of sample. Here, we can see that we are 10 over 50. So our relative rank is 10 over 50. And then we will combine that into a logit, so it's just a mathematical formula, just to be able to standardize the output to be sure that if we use different paths for another trading strategy, we can compare the two outputs, okay? So you create the relative rank, 10 over 50 here, and you apply the following formula, logarithm of the relative rank divided by one minus the relative rank, and you will have the logit, a value, okay, which is around zero, sometimes negative, sometimes positive. And if this value is positive, it means that this path is not considered as overfitting. And the more you will have paths considered as non-overfitted, the more you will have values above zero. And to compute the probability of overfitting, you will compute the number of values below zero, divided by the number of logit here. And you will have a probability of overfitting. The second thing that we can compute is the probability to obtain a positive sharp ratio or a sharp ratio above a certain threshold. So here, it's pretty easy to understand. You have a lot of different paths. You have a lot of sharp ratio on out of sample, okay, for the best parameters from the in sample. And you will just obtain a distribution of possible sharp ratio. The goal is to have some statistics from this distribution. For example, here, it's an example of a possible sharp ratio distribution. As we can see, we have a very high probability to have a sharp ratio above zero and even a sharp ratio above one, okay? We should have around, I don't know, 70, between 70 and 80% of the data above one. So it means that you have a lot of chances, even if the probability of overfitting is high, to obtain a good sharp ratio. And it's important to understand that these two graphs are two faces on the same coin, okay? Here, the sharp ratio will help you to understand the performances on all the different out of sample. So it's independent from your capability to not overfit your model, okay? You can have an overfitted model with good results, okay? It just means that you, if you found the best way to optimize your result, you will have more interesting sharp ratio. That, that's all, okay? But maybe the worst possible case in term or sharp ratio can be something really interesting and profitable, okay? So you have the PBO, the probability of overfitting, that will tell you if yes or not, you're able to optimize in the right way 
your parameters from an in sample to an out sample, which will not say that you will have profitable return. It's very important to understand because maybe you have a, a probability of overfitting equal to zero, but if the strategy is not good, you will not have profitable results, okay? But on the other end, you can have a probability of overfitting of 70%, okay? And in the same time, have only sharp ratio above five, for example. So if you have that, for sure you can continue with this trading strategy because it means that the way that you optimize the parameters is harmful, but the strategy is so good that even if you are not able to optimize the parameters, the sharp ratio that you will have in the test sample will be very good. In live trading, it's not mandatory to have the same type of sharp ratio, but if you have tested that on the CPCV and using also the Monte Carlo simulation that we will see in the next video, you can at least put this strategy in a demo account to see how it works in live trading, okay? Because of course, even if you have an amazing backtest, put always your trading strategy in live trading on a demo account, okay? On paper trading to see if you have similar results because maybe you just made a mistake in the backtesting process. So now to finish, let's talk about the benefits and the limitation of the robustness test. First of all, you can quantify the overfitting. So maybe you can work on a better way to optimize your parameters because maybe just order the criteria and take the best is not the best way to do, okay? You can have several or way to optimize your parameters. So if you have a probability of overfitting very high, maybe you need to work on another one. The advantage is that you have multiple path backtesting, okay? You have backtest only on historical data, that's true, but you have created multiple paths. And so it is multiple paths that the past could be. And that's pretty interesting. And the last advantage is that once you have done the CPCV and you have computed all the different metrics and so on, you can create all the derivative metrics that you want, for example, the probability of overfitting, the sharp ratio distribution, but you can also create a drawdown distribution, for example, that we'll see in the next video. But the only limit is your imagination. On the other end, of course, each method has its limitation. Here, for the robustness test, the CPCV, you can't have a best set of parameters because as you have seen, sometimes we'll try to predict the past using some futures data. It's not bad if it's just to test the robustness and to create several paths, but if you want to select your best parameters using, for example, the path 99, you can't do that because you have predict the past using the future and it's not optimal. So that's why you use the work forward optimization from the previous video to optimize your parameters and the CPCV only to test the robustness of this optimization. The second problem is like for the work forward optimization, you need to have a lot of data, a lot of threads, okay? As you need to create several paths, you need to have a lot of data, at least five years. And the other thing is that if you are doing a robustness test on one week or one month, it's not reliable. You need to do a robustness test on years of data to be sure that you can interpret your results and you have something statistically significant. The last thing is, okay, you have a lot of path that is only historical path. To fix that, you can use a Monte Carlo simulation that we will see in the next video. So if you have any question about this video or one of the previous one, feel free to ask in the comment area and see you soon in the next video.